Welcome back, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk about acquiring an Android phone um, on a Windows system. So, um, the first thing we need if we're trying to uh, acquire the phone is the Android Studio um, SDK. So, basically, down go to this website, and I'll put a link uh, a link below the video. Uh, go to the website and go to SDK Platform uh, Tools for Windows, and download this, and you'll get a zip folder. So extract that zip folder. I've just extracted it to the, the desktop. Um, if you're actually doing this on your forensic workstation, um, extract it into some location. You'll keep it and add it to your path. Um, I'm not going to add this to my path right now, but um, if I was doing this on a real workstation, I would I would be adding it to my path. Okay. So once we get um, the Android, the SDK, and the Android uh, debugging bridge ADB. Uh, we look inside the platform tools folder and we have this adb.exe uh, file. Okay. The next thing we need on Windows, Windows does not have Netcat built in. So one of the tools I was using uh, for Linux was Netcat. So I um, am going to download and install from inmap.org incat, which is uh, basically an incat in replacement. It works almost exactly the same. It has a few more features. Um, but I'm going to be using InCat. So download InCat from InMap.org. And uh, whenever you open it up, it, you also download a zip file from here. You can download a zip file from here. Uh, whenever you download that zip file, you open it up. It's just InCat and a README file. And I copied the InCat executable into the same folder as the Android, as ADB, the Android SDK. Okay, and the reason that I did that is because um, it just makes it easier to type. If everything is in one folder, um, then I can just type the the command names instead of the full paths. Um, again, I have not added any of these to my um, uh, the path in Windows, so I'm just going to do that. Okay. Then the next thing we need to do is get the entire location of where the tools are if it's not in your path and open up a terminal or a command line. So I'm just going to use, you know, standard command line from Windows to CMD and you get this black command line window. I already have one opened up. And right now I'm in users test, so I'm going to CD change directory and then paste in the location where my tools are located and hit enter. So now I'm inside users test desktop platform tools and if I do DIR, then we can see that I have in cat, which is good, and ADB. Okay. So once I'm in that, in that directory and I know that the tools are there, then I want to test if I can actually run the tools. Let me expand this a bit. So I want to run adb.exe h, and that should show me a help menu if it runs. And okay, that's the help menu. And next I want to try in, in cat dash H and that should show me a help menu. So I got the help menu on both of them. That means that my applications can run. Okay. Um, so now let me check here. So I've already connected the Samsung uh, Android phone to this for, uh, to this windows forensic workstation. Um, what I would do, what I need to do now is run adb.exe and devices. And we want to get a list of the Android devices connected to this system. Okay, so ADB wasn't running, so it's now connecting, uh, started successfully, and it shows as unauthorized. So if I check the phone, the phone now is asking me if I want to authorize this connection, if I can unlock. It's asking me if I want to authorize this connection, so I say OK on the phone. So once I've authorized the device, I had to um, disconnect it and reconnect it, and then it's detected. Um, yeah, so this is the reason it wasn't showing up properly is basically because I'm running it in a virtual box, a virtual system. On my uh, main system, there's no problem. Okay, so um, now we have instead of unauthorized, I have the device itself. Okay, um, so what I would normally do now um, is send the um, uh, software, send the APKs. Uh, for rooting the device and for BusyBox into the phone and install it in the phone. So I would do that if I had the APKs downloaded. I would run adb-d install kingoroot.apk. 
Um, now you can just download this APK. I'll give the link below as well. Um, and then once that's installed, I would run uh, busybox dot that APK. And then that would send both of these applications to the phone and install them. Then on the phone, uh, I need to run first Kingo root and root the device, get root access to the device. Once the phone is rooted, then I need to run the BusyBox application and install the utilities into the system, BusyBox utilities into the system. So even if the applications are installed in the phone, um, I still have to run them to root the device and install extra utilities, okay? I'm not going to do that now. If you want to see how to do that, see the video um, about uh, uh, acquiring an image from an Android, uh, sorry, from a Linux computer. Um, so I'll, I'll put a link to that as well. Um, it's exactly the same process. It's just how you, just running the, the, tool, uh, the applications on the phone. Um, very, very straightforward. Okay, so next, um, this phone is already rooted and I already have BusyBox installed on the phone or the application the utilities installed on the phone. So I'm going to do adb-d shell and I'm going to get a shell or shell access uh, to the device itself. Okay, so enter. Okay, so we can see that the um, command prompt has changed. Right, so I have shell at, and then basically the phone name. Um, and I want to test if I have root access already. So I'm gonna do ls slash data, and I should not be able to access this directory if I'm not root. So it says permission denied. Okay, that's exactly what we expect. That's what we want to see. Uh, next, I'm going to do su to switch user and get root privileges, hopefully. So you see that my username changed from shell to root Okay, that's what we want to see. So ls slash data. And if I'm root, I should get access to um, all of the directory, the directories inside data. Okay, if, so if I see that directory listing, then I have root access and everything is looking good. The next thing I need to do uh, on the phone is do cat slash proc partitions cat slash proc partitions and this is proc partitions is a file that has a list of the the disks and partitions um, in the system and cat just reads that file so here we see uh, once we do that we read all of the disks and partitions that are available everything with a p is probably a partition and then this mmc block zero is most likely the physical disk okay so i want to remember or write down mmc block zero uh right Okay, now, now that we know that we have root access to the device, we have root access to the phone, and we know which device, uh, which um, physical disk we want to image, or the physical disk name, I'm going to open up another command line. Okay, so I need to cd uh, desktop, what was it called? Tools? Platform tools platform tools. So I'm going to go back into the platform tools. So now this top command line is the phone. So I'm, I'm accessing the phone. This bottom command line is my local forensic workstation, uh, the Windows workstation, and I have all of the tools inside here. So I'm in the platform tools folder and NCAT.exe and ADB are in there. Okay. So from the local computer, the local forensic workstation, I want to run ADB forward TCP 8888 and then TCP 8888. Okay. What this is doing is telling ADB to forward any traffic from TCP port 8888 to uh, basically just forward on port 8888 uh, to and from the phone. Okay, so the phone and the computer have a connection. Any traffic that goes on 888 gets forwarded, forwarded over. Okay, so now I've sent that command to the phone. So now all of the traffic on 888 is being forwarded to uh, the computer. Uh, right, and then I need to, on the phone, um, set up a listening connection. So that way I can listen on port 888. So we want to do dd if equals slash dev block mmc blk blk zero busy box nc dash l dash p eight 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 now what this is basically says is 
NC is netcat. So netcat listen on port 8888. And whenever a, a connection comes in on that port, send all of the data, like read, read the MMC block zero, this, this disk, read that disk and send all of the data through this. So whenever there's a connection made to the port 8888 on the phone, send all of the hard disk to whoever is making that connection. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically this is just listening for a connection. Whenever a connection is made, send the data uh, through that connection. Okay. So now uh, I need to hit, I need to start it. And now it's just waiting for a connection to come in on port 8888. Okay. So back on, this was on the phone, back on our forensic workstation, I need to initiate the connection. Okay. So in, in Linux, I just used in C, but in windows, we have in cat.exe again, pretty much the same, the same procedure, uh, same command, just in cat instead of in C. And I'm going to do one, two, seven, zero, zero, one, eight, 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 eight. What that says is make a connection on port eight, 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 eight to the local host. And because we have forwarding set up, it will make a connection basically to the phone. The phone will then send us back all of the data from the hard drive. So we need to do something with that data. Let's pipe it to a file called Android uh, .dd. Okay, .dd is the uh, basically the extension for a raw disk image. I'm just going to call this Android right now because it's a test. Um, so what we're doing is initiating a connection on port 8888. This busy box netcat is listening for the connection. Whenever it hears it, it will read the hard drive and send the hard drive data back. We will take that data and save it into android.dd file on our local computer. Now this android.dd file is going to end up in the platform tools folder, this platform tools folder. And most likely, especially if you're doing a real case, you probably don't want to save it into the same uh, folder that you're using your tools in. So I would save it into uh, a case folder. I would have a case folder set up with a, with a case structure set up. So think about where you're going to save this right now. I'm just saving it inside the platform tools folder. Um, but you really should be saving it in some sort of case file separately. Okay. So if we hit enter now, both of these connections are, this one's listening and it's sending data. This one is waiting for, um, basically it's receiving all of the response right now. If we go into the folder, we have Android DD and we can see it's 816 K. If I refresh, then you can see that the, the size is going up as the data is copied over. Uh, now copying this, um, will take actually quite a while. It's going over USB. Um, so it will take a good bit to copy everything, but whenever you finish, you will have a, a, a full physical disk image. Um, if you go to uh, Cybercrime Tech, I, I do a little bit with uh, disk images. Um, uh, I do a little bit with disk images using the Sleuth Kit, and you can see the, for example, the um, uh, partition structure with Sleuth Kit. Okay, so now we're copying the physical disk image, and that's that's getting copied up. Um, whenever both of these commands, whenever the, the command is finished, whenever we've read the entire disk, both of these commands will exit. So you know you're finished whenever the commands exit. Um, make sure that you check the size of the physical disk that you collected versus the size reported by the phone. Um, and then the first thing we have to do after we collect the image is make a hash of the image. So make sure once you collect this disk image, this android.dd, and it's finished, then make a hash of the disk image, document that hash, or sign the image. Um, and then to kind of clean up everything, you need to rem uh, uninstall BusyBox utilities from the phone, and then uh, remove root access from the phone, and then remove both uh, the root application and the BusyBox application from the phone. So kind of cleaning up our traces a little bit. Now, of course, um, we've already talked a little bit about the fact that this will change things. It does change things in the phone. Um, so be prepared to explain, you know, why are you changing things? How are you changing things? Okay, so that's pretty much it for how to acquire um, an Android uh, physical disk image from uh, Windows. It's almost exactly the same as Linux. Um, I'm just using a few tools that are not built in, like NCAT, 
uh, that you can easily download. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much.